Hello, I'm Bob McFadden, aka Etu Brute, and welcome to the Etu Brute Election Year 2016 Summary and Review. As some of you may know, 2016 was another fun, productive year for Etu Brute and the Conspiracy. The first song that we did in 2016, in January of 2016, that we wrote it, recorded it, and filmed it, is a song titled Nothing Without You. It's a very rare non-political song by Etu Brute and the Conspiracy and it's dedicated to my fiance, Doris Houchin. And I hope that she likes it and you like it half as much as we enjoy bringing it to you. Thank you. I thought to say I got plenty of things that you should have heard that day. I got plenty of things like that crazy thing you do. I got plenty of things, but I got nothing without you. For me too, I got plenty of things, but I got nothing without you. I've got plenty to do. Everything, something, anything. I am nothing without you. about to see is titled The Good Old Days. It happens to be my favorite song that we wrote, recorded, and filmed since last year's Girl in Georgia, which is my all-time favorite. This one, I think you will like. I hope so. Thanks. Sports instead. He believes 
for rockin' Hillary and my Bernie are nothing but socialist reds. He said to me, now why would she wanna bring a baby into this world today? Oh, it's a country in such misery, the worst of history, so this is what I have to say. My giants look good, our pitching is great, I think we're gonna win it all. And I'm happy for LeBron and the city of Cleveland, I believe that I may die home. How about your Tigers, losing Martinez, now that's got to really hurt. I'll let you go, I don't wanna keep you, I know you wanna get back to work. Good old days that Republicans always talk about. The good old days were nothing to jump and shout about. The good old days that Republicans like to refer back to. The good old days. I've got a history lesson for you. The People in poverty all across this land. The Millions died. A madman with an evil plan. The The USSR in an arms race with Uncle Sam. Segregation, integration, assassination, the end. The Watergate and hostages taken in the rain. The night, 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 night,
the 1% getting this preferential treatment. Enough is enough. We need to unite and work together if we're all going to get through this. Sounds like socialism to me. <laughs> Democratic socialism. Uh, what's the difference? Huge difference. <laughs> Huge? Huge. Democratic Socialist I long to see an economy work for all of us Integrity, it may be rare, but it's still a must Bernie is the one we can trust I'm proud to be a Democratic Socialist I long to see health care for all of us Social Security, saving it is a must Bernie is the one Question for you, Senator Sanders, comes from Jerry Odie. She says she is an undecided voter. Jerry? Yes, Senator, some of your detractors have called you a socialist on occasions, and you don't seem too troubled by that, and sometimes embrace it. I wondered if you could elaborate on sure. that, and it, just to show us what the comfort level you have, your definition of it, so that it doesn't concern the rest of us citizens. Well, what democratic socialism means to me 
is that economic rights, the right for economic security, is, should exist in the United States of America. It means to me that there's something wrong when we have millions of senior citizens today trying to get by on eleven, twelve thousand dollars a year social security. It means there's something wrong when the rich get richer and almost everybody else gets poor. It means there is something wrong and government should play a role in making sure that all of our kids, regardless of their income, are able to get a higher education, which is why I'm calling for free tuition at public colleges and universities and why we have to deal with this horrendous level of student debt that people are having. Now, what's going on in countries around the world, in Scandinavia and in Germany, the ideas that I am talking about are not radical ideas. So what democratic socialism means to me in its essence is that we cannot continue to have a government dominated by the billionaire class and a Congress that continues to work if for the interest of the people on top while ignoring working families. What this campaign is about and what I believe in is creating a government that works for all of us, not just a handful of people on the top. That's my definition of democratic socialism. The next one is titled, Voting Against Their Best Interests. Unfortunately, this one has five bombs in it. So be prepared and uh, do the best you can. Thanks. Watches Fox News every single night and agrees with all that is said. Jesse is more religious, goes to church every Sunday morning. He's concerned about all the babies of the world, even those that have never been born. Gary is a tenant in a warehouse, makes nine dollars an hour in pay. Doesn't like the minorities in the plays And he shows it every other day Dishy collects Social Security $12,000 in a year But people cross the border that she'll never meet Is the thing that she most fears They are voting against their best interests It is what they always Cut our programs is what they say They want to throw more money at the military Cut social security, leaving cupboards bare And even if they lose their own health insurance Repeal Obamacare They are voting against their best interests And the interests of their children too
Jesse, Gary, and Dee. They all have kids, and their kids will someday have kids too. I often wonder if they think about the world and the harm that their roads do. Billy, Jesse, Gary, and Dee will someday die, and their kids will have a difficult time. The rising tide and the civil unrest and the corporate ladder to street decline. They are voting against their best interests. And they will rain on Medicare. Yes, they're voting. Jesse, Gary, and Dee will someday die, and the grandkids will have a hard time. With no minimum wage, no Medicare, private prisons for most of their crimes. Billy, Jesse, Gary, and Dee will someday die, and the grandkids will have a hard time. Back in the 30s, the thing they used to say was, Brother, can you spare a dime? They are voting again. And now, let's hear from a man who has had the best interests of the middle class and working families all his adult life, uppermost in his mind, in his heart, the next President of the United States, Senator Bernie Sanders. Senator Sanders. Anderson, thank you very much. I think most Americans understand that our country today faces a series of unprecedented crises. The middle class of this country for the last 40 years has been disappearing. Millions of Americans are working longer hours for lower wages, and yet almost all of the new income and wealth being created is going to the top 1%. As a result of this disastrous Citizens United Supreme Court decision, our campaign finance system is corrupt and is undermining American democracy. Millionaires and billionaires are pouring unbelievable sums of money into the political process in order to fund super PACs and to elect candidates who represent their interests, not the interests of working people. Today, the scientific community is virtually unanimous. Climate change is real. It is caused by human activity. And we have a moral responsibility 
to transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energy and leave this planet a habitable planet for our children and our grandchildren. Today in America, we have more people in jail than any other country on earth. African American youth unemployment is 51%. Hispanic youth unemployment is 36%. It seems to me that instead of building more jails and providing more incarceration, maybe, just maybe, we should be putting money into education and jobs for our kids. What this campaign is about is whether we can mobilize our people to take back our government from a handful of billionaires and create the vibrant democracy we know we can and should have. Thank you. The last song that we wrote, recorded, and filmed in the year 2016 is titled Lesser of Two Evils. Check out the conspiracy playing two parts in this one. He plays Bernie and he also plays Trump with our drummer playing Hillary. I love this one. And Bernie is really great at the end of it. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.
here uh, in the audience. We're going to take some audience questions. Uh, first comes from David Jakubowicz. He's a 20-year-old UPenn student who supports you. David. So first, I want to say, as a student, I'm very excited to be voting for the first time tomorrow for you. So right. thank you. Uh, my question is, many of your supporters are staunchly opposed to Hillary Clinton and are considering writing you in, voting for a third party candidate, or not voting at all if you don't win the nomination. I believe you will win the nomination and the presidency, but if you don't, will you encourage your supporters to vote for Secretary Clinton? Dave, thanks for the question. And let me answer it uh, in this way. Um, first, um, I think it is, you know, we're not a movement where I can slap my fingers and say to you or to anybody else, what you should do, because you won't listen to me, you shouldn't. Uh, you'll make these decisions yourself. I think if we end up losing, and I hope we do not, and if Secretary Clinton wins, it is incumbent upon her to tell millions of people who right now do not believe in establishment politics or establishment economics, who have serious misgivings about a candidate who has received millions of dollars from Wall Street and other special interests. She has got to go out to you and to millions of other people and say, yeah, I think the United States should join the rest of the industrialized world and take on the private insurance companies and the greed of the drug companies and pass a Medicare for all. I think that, says Secretary Clinton, that for the young people in this country, you should not have to leave college 30, 50, 70 thousand dollars in debt because we're going to make, as many other countries around the world do, public colleges and universities tuition free. I think Secretary Clinton is going to have to explain to millions of young people and a lot of other people that climate change is a real crisis and incrementalism is just not going to solve it. That's and she is going to have to come on board and say, yeah, I know it's hard, but I am going to take on the fossil fuel industry and pass a carbon tax. So, but the point that I am making is, it is incumbent upon Secretary Clinton to reach out not only to my supporters, but to all of the American people with an agenda that they believe will represent the interest of working families, lower income people, the middle class, those of us who are concerned about the environment, and not just big money interests. There's, there's, there are Hillary Clinton supporters who I talk to, um, people who, some of whom are, are diehards and some of whom aren't, they voted for her, they like you, they like your politics. But, but there is concern that the thing you said at the beginning of that answer strikes me as important. You can't snap your fingers. I mean, people, this thing is big and people are very passionate. Um, you know, you have Tim Robbins, who's done events for you. He tweeted something today about the elections being stolen, and Rosario Dawson mentioned Monica Lewinsky, and all that's going to come out in the wash, I agree. But the question for you is, if it's incumbent on her, what role do you have if and when you come to that moment? Good. Fair question. I work with Republicans in the U.S. Senate, and I see what they do in the House. I think the Republican Party today has moved so far to the right that they are way, way, way out of touch with where the American people are. These are people who, almost without exception, do not even recognize the reality of climate change, let alone want to do anything about it. They want to cut Social Security and give tax breaks to billionaires. They want to end the Affordable Care Act, but they have nothing to replace it with. I will do everything in my power to make sure that no Republican gets into the White House in this election. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed it, and I hope everyone will vote in November. Remember, even if the candidate is not your first choice, vote Democratic for the good of the middle class and working families across our entire nation. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next year.